Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're really going to discuss what happens when red blood cells or erythrocytes are degraded. And we're going to track each part of the red blood cell, which really amounts to the heme, the globin, which is the protein parts, and the iron. So what happens with all three of these things? But really to start talking about this, we need to know what happens to make red blood cells. So to make red blood cells, we really need amino acids to make proteins. We need iron and we need heme. And we're gonna combine all of these things together and the process of making a red blood cell is called erythropoiesis. And erythropoiesis is done in the red bone marrow inside long bones. And so here we see a red blood cell. Once this red blood cell is made in the red bone marrow, it's going to be moved into the plasma where it's going to circulate in the blood and it's going to function in the transport of respiratory gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. But what happens when this red blood cell has served its lifetime, served its purpose? Well, it needs to be degraded. Okay? And it's going to be degraded in one of two ways. The less common way is just simple hemolysis in the blood. We're going to come back to that at the end of the video. But the main focus is when it's actually degraded in the spleen. And it also can do this in the liver, um, but it's specifically going to be a liver macrophage or a spleen macrophage. But the spleen is the major site of red blood cell destruction. In fact, one, my anatomy and physiology teacher during undergrad said that the spleen is the graveyard of red blood cells. So this can also occur in the liver macrophages, but mainly here. So as I said, the red blood cell will be taken up by the spleen and it will be separated into three components, the globin, the heme, and the iron. Remember, the iron is technically part of the heme, but it can be removed, all right? Let's look at the iron first. So the iron will simply be packaged with a protein called transferrin, and it will be moved in the blood, ultimately back to the red bone marrow. Now, there are other tissues that are gonna use iron for different purposes, and transferrin can take iron to those tissues as well. But since we need to make more red blood cells in the red bone marrow, some of that transfer is going to take some iron back to the bone marrow, and that way we can manufacture more red blood cells to replace the ones that were just destroyed. Okay? But that iron in the spleen macrophage has to first be removed from the heme, and that removal is done through this enzyme called heme oxygenase. So heme oxygenase is the first enzyme in heme degradation. And so heme oxygenase is going to convert heme into something called biliverdin. Okay? This is done in the spleen macrophage. And then an enzyme called biliverdin reductase is going to convert biliverdin into bilirubin. Right? Now this bilirubin is going to have to be transported to the liver. Okay? So that's where the remainder of the metabolism occurs. So when bilirubin is transferred to the liver, there's going to be an enzyme called bilirubin diglucuronosyl transferase that's going to attach some glucuronide residues to the bilirubin, and that's going to form something called bilirubin diglucuronide. Okay? Now that solubilizes the bilirubin, even more so than it was before, and it's going to then be transported to one of two places. Either that bilirubin diglucuronide is going to go to the intestines, or it's going to end up in the kidneys. Now, if the bilirubin diglucuronide ends up in the, in the intestines, then there's going to be some intestinal bacteria that are going to convert this into two products. One is called stercobilinogen, and the other is called stercobilin, the latter of which is actually what gives feces its brown color. Okay? So the stercobilin is actually a brown pigment. And so this is something that's done not by human enzymes. It's actually done by bacterial enzymes in the gut. And so these stercobilinogens and stercobilins are excreted in the feces. Okay. Now the other place for bilirubin diglucuronide to go is the kidneys. And there's some bacteria in the tubules of the kidneys that are going to be able to convert bilirubin diglucuronide into urobilinogen and urobilin. You might be able to guess that urobilin in particular is actually what gives urine its yellow color because urobilin is actually a yellow pigment. And so heme, at least the ring component of this compound, is really just degraded into other structures that are excreted, either in the urine or the feces, okay? Now, the globin part of hemoglobin, 
of the red blood cell. This part is just simply degraded into amino acids. This is the easier one. So proteolysis by enzymes within the spleen macrophage, they just degrade the globins into amino acids, which are then dumped into the blood, and then they go to whatever tissue needs them. And of course, to remake red blood cells via erythropoiesis, we need more amino acids. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, red blood cells can also spontaneously hemolyze in the blood. When the red blood cell spontaneously hemolyzes, it'll break really into two parts. Really the red blood cell part as a whole, and then some of the hemoglobin or just the heme may actually come off of it. The protein parts generally are going to go back to a macrophage, either in the spleen or the liver, where they're further degraded into more amino acids, and we know what happens to those now. They're just going to be dumped back into the blood and go to all sorts of tissues. The hemoglobin, or just the heme by itself usually, will actually just go directly to the kidneys and be excreted in urine. Okay? This process of spontaneous hemolysis does not happen uh, to a great extent. Percentage-wise, the vast majority of these red blood cells are degraded in the spleen or liver macrophages. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense and gives you a good broad understanding of what's going on with red blood cell degradation. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much. Here's a plug for The Anatomy Gal, a channel made by my friend and colleague, Natalie Wade. She's got excellent tutorials and explanations for lab materials in anatomy and physiology, even with cadavers, so it's really cool. Be sure to check out her channel and subscribe. A link is in the description below.